So the fundamental question that we're interested in is uh, metastasis, or the spread of cancer from the primary tumor to a distal organ site. Upwards of 90% of the causes of death from cancer are secondary to metastasis, or the spread of cancer from the primary tumor to the distal organ site. So uh, we use a mouse model that is very unique, and it was originally developed by Isaiah Fiddler, uh, to study this process of metastasis. And what's great about this mouse model is we can take human cancer cells, such as human breast cancer cells uh, or human colon cancer cells, we can place these cells in this mouse. It's an immunodeficient mouse. And once we put these cells in the mouse, we actually find that they spread to organs that, that, they, that in the same manner that human cancer cells spread to organs. We then go and compare these cells that can spread to these organs to cells that cannot spread to these organs, and we find differences in terms of genes that are increased in these cells or other types of molecules that are increased. And then what we do is we, we reduce the levels of these molecules. We block these molecules or these genes, and we find uh, that uh, for some of these genes, uh, when we block their levels, the cells no longer spread. In order to metastasize, cells must be able to grow, so they must be able to proliferate rapidly. They must be resistant to cell death. They must be able to move, migrate. They must be able to swim through tissues or invade. Uh, they must be able to get into the bloodstream and get out of the bloodstream. And so many of these aspects of metastasis we study in we, we study in vitro, so in the laboratory. If we can count the cells and see how they increase with time, can actually visualize and using uh, staining methods we can count the number of cells that are undergoing cell death and we can see that the cells that are more metastatic are more resistant to cell death. We use this chamber, it's called a transwell chamber, and what we do is to place cancer cells in the top chamber in solution and we quantify their ability to move through these small pores at the bottom of this transwell uh, chamber. Cells that can spread and metastasize effectively move very rapidly through this. Molecules that can block the activity of those cells can actually uh, reduce the number of cells that can spread through this. We use all these different approaches to uh, quantify these different aspects of the metastatic program so we can get a sense of how individual molecules or individual microRNAs regulate these various aspects of metastasis. If we can identify genes and molecules that can empower cells to spread to certain sites, we could potentially use these molecules to predict which patients at time of diagnosis, when their initial cancer is identified, we can identify which patients' cancers may spread. If we can identify them, we can give them more aggressive therapies and experimental therapies. And also, if we identify patients whose cancers are unlikely to spread, we could, pr we could save them from the harm of chemotherapies and other, other experimental therapies. So most of our work has been done in breast cancer and uh, the NIH Innovator Award uh, enables us to tackle a highly prevalent uh, cancer, and uh, colon cancer, which is, uh, which is an aggressive cancer for which diagnostic tools are, are lacking. And so what we're interested in is doing is to identify microRNAs that actually suppress colon cancer spread. By setting up this system in colon cancer, we can actually compare breast cancer and colon cancer to and ask the simple question, are there different microRNAs that regulate the spread of these cancers? Are, what are the genes that these microRNAs regulate? Are there commonalities in the biological processes involved? Are there differences? Uh, and uh, we're very interested in both the diagnostic applications, so can we use these molecules diagnostically, but also in the future we're interested in determining whether we can apply the knowledge we gain through the study of these microRNAs and their pathways to develop better therapeutics for this deadly disease.